Since Syria's civil war began, the U.N. says 12 million Syrians have been forced to leave their homes, with another one and a half million expected to leave this year. The recent bombardment of eastern Ghouta highlights the need for new sanctuaries. As Malcolm Bravent reports, this is being watched with concern on a Scottish island where a small Syrian community has been warmly welcomed. And a warning, you may find some images in this story disturbing. A short ferry ride from Scotland's west coast lies the Isle of Bute. Once a flourishing vacation destination for workers from Glasgow, the island's population has shrunk and its economy has withered. The arrival of 24 Syrian families is contributing to an atmosphere of regeneration. A little bit longer to talk. Like uh, usually here, yeah. but here shorter. More shorter, yeah. please. Munza al Dasani used to have a barber shop in Damascus and has become the first Syrian to set up his own business on the island. Others, including a bakery, are in the pipeline. The people here are very, very nice, very helpful. Uh, they give us uh, a big help when we came and uh, still help us for everything. Al Dasani's client base is growing thanks to recommendations from customers like police officer Andrew Wilson, who approves the decision to give the Syrian sanctuary. I think it's a very positive thing for the island. Um, you know, the island itself is predominantly an elderly kind of community, so it's it's always it's good to get the kind of fresh kind of blood to the island. Um, and Munzi, I've, I've been coming here now since since he came. Um, just he's, he's really good at his job as well. Al Dasani is proud that his work ethic is recognised in Butte, but speaking in his native Arabic expresses sadness that the island's hospitality has not been replicated elsewhere in Europe. Unfortunately, the European governments think the Syrians are going to come and there will be an Islamic takeover. We never thought about this. We never thought about this. Actually, we are running from ISIS. We are running from these groups to find safety and so that we and our children can live in safety. Just around the corner, a former builder from Damascus is repaying what he sees as his debt to Butte by volunteering in Angela Callahan's charity shop. Ahmed asked us not to reveal his identity because he fears retribution against family members still in Syria. I am happy. I am very happy. Me and uh, every family. Ahmed is taking English lessons, but the language is proving difficult. Here there is no war and no airstrikes. But in Syria, we ran from the war and airstrikes. The children are very happy. Our family is very happy here. There are no problems at all. We ran from the problems and from Bashar al-Assad. The latest images from eastern Ghouta underpin Ahmed's sense of gratitude. We watch the news a lot. Our heart is broken for our people in Syria, from the airstrikes and the war. A lot of sad images. Me and my children and my wife have decided to stay in Scotland. We will not return to Syria. Angela Callahan was instrumental in making the Syrians welcome. After surviving breast cancer, she devoted her life to charity. Any profits from her second-hand shop fund a food bank that serves the poorest islanders. I see television, same as anybody else. I see the news at night. I go to my friends' houses, I listen to their, their stories, which mostly are horrifying, and I just couldn't even imagine being there myself. And I, I, I just think, in coming to a place like this, where it's tranquil, stunning, people are nice, that feeling of... Um, no fear leaves them within the space of mm, maybe a few weeks. You can see it in their faces, in their eyes. A lot of them are putting down roots, um, and I would actually say just about all of them. They have settled in fantastic. They've all got friends, um, got people that come to their houses for a wee cup of tea, like, like I do quite often, <laughs> you know. Most Syrians were unwilling to talk because of fear that their families might be targeted. Craft brewer Aidan Canavan is highly protective of the newcomers. The problems came from the people of Butte who had perceptions that uh, you, they wouldn't be able to celebrate Christmas, they wouldn't be able to uh, eat bacon at school. The, all these rumours went around. None of them were true. It was just fabricated stories that went around. We live in a time of different cultures. Peter Atkins is a Baptist minister. 
He believes Butte offers opportunities for the Syrians, but worries that like other islanders, they may struggle to find employment. With his Jamaican heritage, Atkins understands the complexities of integration. Whatever you do, it takes time. It takes time. The Syrians are learning English, they're, they're chatty, you, you speak to them in the street, um, and all the, all the signs are good. Um, but at the same time, it's a different situation from, from my grandparents, for example, because they're refugees. You know, they, they didn't intend to come here. This wasn't a life plan, this wasn't intentional. And should the Syrian situation become more positive in five or ten years, we would expect that they would leave. So it's difficult to, to settle and make integration plans with, with, that, with that context, although Syria is not really giving us much cause for hope on that front. The goodwill towards refugees on this island is unmistakable. But three years into the migration crisis, the European Union remains deeply divided. Former communist nations are resolutely refusing to take in any refugees. EU leaders have been asked to thrash out a common policy to handle future influxes so that the burden can be fairly shared. But the split is so profound that some experts believe there will not be any agreement. While he consolidates his business, Al Dasani's heart and mind is never far from Syria. For now, I am here. I am living my life normally and in safety. But I can't avoid the distressing scenes on television, the helpless situation of the Syrian people and the international community's complicity. Tragically, all humanity is lost. I simply ask the international community and anyone to think. If something like this happened to you, would you accept it? There's nothing the people of Butte can do to bring peace to Syria, but individually they're furthering the cause of human understanding. Because they're part of my family and I'm part of their family and I know that because he calls me his sister and he's my brother. <laughs> yes, my brother. Life is complex for the Syrians, but it must go on. Syrian children are being born here, in peace, and as always, imbued with their parents' hope that their future will be better. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant on the Isle of Butte.